What is going on guys and welcome back to the YouTube channel. So on today's video, I'm going to talk you guys through a really effective method when it comes to fat loss. So I'm going to get asked quite a lot and a method that we use quite frequently at FitLab and that is carb cycling. Okay, this is effectively looking at your carbs and distributing it on the days throughout the week where it's a little bit more strategic around your training, around optimizing fat loss, around improving performance. We can get a better response sometimes if we actually start looking at things a little bit more tactically across the week when it comes to this kind of thing. Now, we don't necessarily need to overcomplicate and I just wanna reiterate at the start that you will lose weight regardless of to whether how you carb cycle if you're in a calorie deficit. So you don't need to do this to lose fat and to get in shape. You can still do it from just the same amount of calories each day in a deficit. However, if we're looking for a slightly more advanced approach, which might trigger slightly different responses, we can start thinking about things like this, like carb cycling, which sometimes can work well. Sometimes after the initial, say, month or two, we can maybe move to a more carb cycling approach. So start off with just the same amount of calories each day, keeping it nice and sustainable. And as we get into more of the depths of our diet, we can move to something like this, which as I say, can have a bit more of an enhanced effect when it comes to fat loss, when it comes to improving body composition, when it comes to building muscle. So I'm gonna to talk to you guys exactly how you can set your diet up for optimal carb cycling, for fat loss, for building muscle. And I'm gonna use uh, my trusted whiteboard to just give you a complete rundown of this, okay? So what I want you to think about is, first of all, we need to be in a calorie deficit, right? So we need to think about how many calories across each week is gonna put us in deficit. I'm just gonna use a completely broad example of a guy. Um, I'm gonna say that the rough amount of calories that he would need to consume to be in a calorie deficit every single day would be just over 2,000 calories per day. So across the week, let's call it around 15K calories, okay? So weekly amount of calories, weekly KCAL equals 15K. So we know that if we are at 15,000 calories across the entire week, we're gonna be within a calorie deficit. So now what we can start thinking about is how we distribute these calories throughout the week in terms of carb cycling. So next up, let's think about the days that we're training and let's work it around that. The good thing about carb cycling is you can also make it quite tactical in terms of your social life as well. So you can also improve performance, but you can also improve your social life or you can give yourself a little bit more leeway on your social events as well from using this tactic. So what we need to think about is we've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, okay? So seven days in our week. Now we need to start, start thinking about the days that we train. So I'm just gonna give you again, quite a broad example. This is quite similar to a lot of the guys that join the program at FitLab. We'll typically use a four day training split, okay? So we'll get them to do weights four days per week. So let's just say, for an example, for this person, let's say that on Monday, we're doing upper, or push, so you'd push on Monday. Everyone loves a chest day Monday, shoulder day Monday, right? It's common, common knowledge. Let's say Tuesday, we go for a pull, okay? Then Wednesday, we're just gonna say that this is, okay, rest day, okay? Thursday as well, we're gonna call it a rest day. So two days in a row, midweek, a lot of you guys, Wednesday and Thursday, Maybe you have a super busy day. Maybe you don't have time to get to the gym. Maybe you just want midweek rest. You can do that. Or maybe you can switch Friday and Thursday around. So take a rest Wednesday. Maybe you can train on Thursday and take a rest Friday. So whichever works for you. In this example, I'm gonna show two rest days, Wednesday and Thursday, right? We're recovered, then we're ready to smash the end of the week. Then what we would then look to do is, maybe then we go upper, okay? So don't worry, we are gonna train legs. This is all part of a tactical plan. So we do push, we do pull, we rest on Wednesday, we rest on Thursday, and then Friday we attack upper body, okay? So by the time we got to the end of the week, we've smashed our full upper body, which is great, right? Then we need to start thinking about leg day. We don't neglect our legs. So let's say we do leg day on Saturday, okay? So for you guys that have trained legs, I'm sure a lot of you have, you know that that's probably the toughest workout of your week. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna require the most amount of calories. So what we can do on that day is we can put more carbs towards our workout. So what we need to think about now is how we distribute the calories. So on the push and pull days, we're gonna go with 2.5 K calories, okay? So that's our normal training days. Wednesday, we're not training. So the demand for energy, for calories, is gonna be way less. So we don't need to use as many calories on Wednesday. So what we're gonna do on Wednesday is we're gonna have 1.5. 
Okay, so we're gonna effectively go lower carb on Wednesday because the output's not there. And we're gonna do exactly the same on Thursday as well. So we're gonna go 1.5K Thursday too, right? So we've effectively gone two more moderate, higher carb days, and then we've got two low carb days because we're not training. So we're gonna get a much better response on those days. Then back to our training day again Friday. So then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go back to our normal 2.5K calories, okay? Moderate day. Upper body is still gonna be a tough workout, but we don't necessarily need to go super high carb on that day. So then what we can do on Saturday is we can go to 3K calories, okay? The reason why this is gonna be so effective is because firstly we're training legs, so we need more calories on leg day because it's gonna be tough. But also, what do most people wanna do Saturday? They wanna go out, they wanna have a nice meal, maybe wanna go out with their partner, they maybe wanna treat themselves to a drink at the weekend, anything that's fun in their life, right? If we can put that event on Saturday on our highest, our most demanding workout so that we're gonna burn the most amount of calories anyway and kind of need the replenishment, that's the most tactical thing we can do. And this is why at FitLab, we give a lot of our clients a flexible day on Saturday. We don't necessarily get into train Saturday all the time, but we give them a higher calorie day. We look at their calories across the week and we do give them that more flexibility at the weekend because this helps them enjoy themselves. So if we can go one better and we can put our toughest workout on a Saturday as well, we are gonna get the most bang for our buck from that week because we need the extra calories on that specific day. So we'll go 3K calories on, on Saturday and then Sunday, we've enjoyed our meal out, we're resting, we're recovering, we can go back down to 1.5K, okay? So realistically, we implement maybe a little bit of a fast in the morning on Sunday, maybe we've got a roast dinner with our family in the afternoon, we can save the majority of our calories for the afternoon, we just need to be a little bit more careful. And then Monday, we're back to 2.5K again. So if we add all these up, what that gives us is this number here, okay? So that's gonna give us 15,000 calories across the entire week but we have just distributed it dependent on our training and our energy demands. So the reason why this approach works so well, not just thinking about kind of the energy demand and thinking about our social life, but there's a few things we need to think about. Firstly, if we're having more carbohydrates on our training days, we are gonna be triggering insulin, especially around the workouts. Now, insulin is a hormone which promotes muscle protein synthesis. So it's an anabolic hormone. So we want to be consuming more carbohydrates around our workouts so we can improve our insulin levels and we can actually get more from our workouts and improve our rate of muscle growth. So this is why we want to be having carbohydrates on these days. Now, on the days that we're not training, we don't wanna be raising our insulin levels because insulin is something that's gonna stop us from losing body fat. So when we raise insulin, this shuts the door to fat loss. So if we can keep our body in a low insulin state throughout the days that we're not training, on Wednesday, on Thursday, then we're gonna promote fat loss, but then we're gonna improve our body's ability to grow muscle on the days where we do need the carbohydrates because we're training, especially on this leg workout. We can raise our insulin levels around our training on Sunday, when on Saturday when we're training legs and the demand for energy is there, we're gonna give ourselves a much better chance of success. So not only is this approach very good in terms of socializing, it works well because people like to eat more food on their training, they feel like they've earned their calories a little bit more because they're doing an aggressive or a tough, challenging workout. And it just means on the days that you're not training, you can essentially eat a little bit less food, you maybe can implement a little bit of a fast, which again, works really well, there's a lot of benefits to that. And it just means that you're gonna kind of optimize and enhance your level of fat loss and your level of muscle building through just using a few very basic principles. Now, I'm not saying you need to do this, and if this looks a little bit complicated, maybe just stick with a very regular normal calorie deficit. As I say, you're still going to lose body fat. But if you're looking to take your results to the next level, you wanna try carb cycling, give it a go. This is how I would roughly look to set up your carb cycling approach. Be tactical, think about when you're training, think about when you like the extra calories, and you can make it work around that. So anyway, guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, make sure you smash the like button, make sure you hit the bell notification so you're notified the next time I post on here, and make sure you hit subscribe for future videos, and I'm gonna catch you in the next video.